Hello from me, Alec Wilkinson from Mount Van Hovenberg Cross Country Track in the stunning Adirondack Mountains. It is a glorious day for the fans and athletes about to start this latest event of Nordic Combined. One of the legacy sites of the Lake Placid Olympics of 1980. The cross country track has been upgraded recently and uh, well, it's looking great, isn't it? And, uh, the conditions are excellent for the female athletes about to lock horns. It's a small field, six women um, for the mass start Normal Hill five kilometer cross country race. And the result of this race will determine the starting order and points for the ski jumping round later today. Checks and preparations going on near the start line and they will be away very shortly indeed. We're just a few minutes from the start of this race. The athletes will also have taken a, a long hard look at the track conditions this morning. Uh, air temperature minus six, so colder than it has been, uh, but a glorious sunny day, the first we've had in over a week here at Lake Placid. Yeah, they will have examined the uh, state of the snow and had conversations with their technicians <laughs> to prepare their skis just so and to make sure that they are right. Joanna Kill of Poland. We have high hopes for her competition here this afternoon because um, she had put in a, a great performance, missing out on the medals in the Gunderson a couple of days ago. Uh, but she really did uh, show herself to be strong in the cross country. The three women to overcome, though, are Haruka and Yuna Kasai, the two sisters, and their teammate Ayana Miyazaki, who've already taken gold, silver and bronze at these games. Sana Azagami is the other uh, Japanese contestant. And we are looking at the silver medalist in the Gunson uh, Yuna Kasai. After this race, there'll be a short break and then it'll be the men's uh, individual mass start. So a great afternoon of Nordic combined coming up from Lake Placid. You can see them uh, lining up side by side. The, the tram line tracks are there to prevent trips and crashes at the start. Um, but uh, a few meters from that start, those tracks flatten out and it'll be uh, back to standard uh, skating style. So Haruka Kasai, 18 years old from Japan, already a gold medal in her pocket. Uh, and they start in the order in which they finished the Gunderson competition on Friday. Joanna Kill there in fourth. Tess Arnone of the USA. We haven't really been able to see her in, 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 in full action in the um, cross country because she started so far back uh, after a poor performance on the hill uh, on Friday that um, it'll be interesting to actually gauge her performance here. And then in sixth place, Sana Azagami, who didn't manage to uh, start the cross country on Friday. So um, she's a bit of an unknown quantity for us. Just waiting for the OK from the officials to make sure the track is clear and ready for everyone. Five tram lines for six starters and the women's normal hill mass start five kilometer cross-country race is underway here at mount van hovenberg with the pole joanna kill taking an early lead joanna had a, a great performance on um, on friday she missed out on the medals uh, but she started two minutes uh, with a two minutes advan a disadvantage, a two minutes handicap uh, after the uh, hill jumps and uh, just missed out on bronze by a few seconds. So she really proved herself. Now remember, it's all about gaining as much time as possible in this round because every minute is worth 15 points when they then move on to the ski jumping later on tonight. So. 
the fast sprinters, the more confident cross-country racers will be trying to get as much of an advantage over the others as possible as they begin their first uh, uphill stretch. Maximum climbs uh, 29 metres on this track. And we'll be seeing two laps of a two and a half kilometre track. Downhill they come, very careful. Fall at this stage would be very costly indeed. And Kill has dropped back now to the back of the field as the three Japanese athletes try and break away. Now we have two checkpoints around the track. Approaching the 1.4 kilometer checkpoint. So they do a, a kilometer and a half, and then it's only a few hundred meters to the next checkpoint, and then 400 into the stadium. But at the moment, it's the two Kasai sisters in first and second with Sana Zagami in third. Three years between the uh, three Japanese uh, athletes. Azagami in third place there, 21 years old, being led by two 18-year-old twins from Sapporo. Just saw Haruka Kasai looking over her shoulder, making sure she's keeping an eye on who's behind her. She doesn't want to be caught out. Joanna Kill. We're wearing bib number four with that leading bunch. Tessa Noni bringing up the rear, just behind Ayane Miyazaki, a bronze medalist in the individual Gunderson. Amongst some of the strongest all-rounders, these Nordic combined athletes, they need the stamina, the aerobic fitness for the cross country. They also need the a huge amount of strength and explosive power in their legs for the ski jumping. So there you can see the uh, split, nothing significant um, at the moment at that first checkpoint. And already we're beginning to see a split in the field with Miyazaki and Anone struggling at the back. And in a five kilometer, you can't let them get that far ahead so early. The Kasai's also try and break away now. So Kill will want to stay in touch with them. She won't want to see them disappear off into the distance. second checkpoint very soon and what you see there really is the story of the Nordic combined so far in these games Japanese dominance they are so strong and have such strength in depth within the team Japan with four medals already in the individual Gunderson 
bronze, silver and gold in the women's. And then it was uh, gold as well in the men's from uh, Sakutara Kobayashi. So after that climb, chance to catch their breaths and carefully, but as fast as possible, make their way downhill back towards the stadium. So we're coming up to uh, the halfway mark of this race already, the two and a half kilometres, and that's when we'll be able to get a good, uh, a good look at the rest of the field at the checkpoint when we get their times up. We'll see just how far back they are, but it's not looking good for Joanna Kill. The oldest uh, competitor in this competition, at 22 years of age. Strange to say that, isn't it? The oldest competitor at 22 from Poland. Uh, she's already dropped further back, has got almost 12 seconds of, uh, of uh, separation now from the leaders. Interesting to see if these two are working together or if at some point we'll see them break or try to break away from each other. <laughs> Joanna Killer Poland trying to get away from uh, the other Japanese athlete there but coming out of the stadium and heading uphill it's our two leaders from japan haruka and yuna kasai and they are looking dominant now and it's hard to see anyone catching them the battle really is between those two for victory in this competition but of course it's all about trying to stick as close to those leading pairs as possible because the points from this afternoon will be carried into tonight's ski jumping. And they are trying to push as hard as possible because every minute they finish ahead of the others is 15 points extra on the board before they've even started the ski jumping competition. came side by side down that hill. Be interesting to see if they've swapped positions when we next uh, catch sight of them on our cameras. Oh, a bit of a stumble there from the Japanese athlete. She recovered well. Here they are. And uh, it's still Haruka out in front. Uh, Yuna Kasai of the Tokai University in Sapporo in second place. Extraordinary career already. At the age of 14, she went to the Japanese National Championships and just missed out on bronze. And so what do you do? Well, you go back a year later, don't you, at the age of 15 and take silver. The woman who beat her to gold is right behind her at the moment in this race, Ayani Miyazaki. Ready to come to the first checkpoint of this second and final lap of the race. And uh, look behind them, the number four, Joanna Kill of Poland, is really trying to fight back, really doing her best. She's uh, dropped the Japanese athlete that had been shadowing her. And now she has the Kasai's in her sights. Got a rhythm going here. And 
she'll be buoyed by the sight of the two Japanese contestants in front of her. But Joanna will obviously reach that the top of this hill, the brow of the hill, and the Japanese will be away again. Psychology plays a big, big part in Nordic combined. It's not just how you overcome your fears on the hills. It's also how you just keep going, how you just keep pushing yourself when things get tough in the cross country. So here we go. We are at this first checkpoint of the second lap. 3.9 kilometer mark, clock is ticking. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, the leaders have just extended their separation from Kill. He was 11 seconds behind at the last checkpoint. So just under two kilometers to go now. Time to get into a tuck, catch their breaths. Monica Sides is coming through the shot. It's already won twice in the World Cup, two bronzes in the mass start and the individual. So they're young, but they have plenty of experience and have proved themselves many times already. And so Yuna Kasai has gone ahead of her sister, Haruka. And this is the point where she starts to try and build her advantage, starts trying to gain seconds and minutes, if possible, from the other competitors vital time that she can carry through to the ski jumping at the second checkpoint of this second lap it is Yuna Kasai who is out in front shadowed by her sister Haruka and 16.7 seconds now the difference between Joanna Kill and the leader So I think we're going to see Kill come in in third, but uh, is there any catching of Yuna Kasai? It doesn't look like it. She's entering the stadium. It's just a few hundred metres now to the finish line. Her sister trying to close that gap. And barring disaster, this should be in the bag for Yuna Kasai. Yes, it is. She picks her lane. She's going down the middle. And the silver medalist in the individual, Gunderson, has put herself in a great position going into the ski jumping later on today with victory in the cross country, followed closely by Haruka Kasai, her sister. They throw themselves down to catch their breaths as we watch Joanna Kill of Poland, the oldest competitor at 22 years, crossing the line in third. 17 and a half seconds behind the winner of that race. Now, with every second and every minute counting for the ski jumping, we're going to try and look back and see where the other three competitors are. We're looking for Azagami, Anone of uh, the USA, and Miyazaki, and it's the American that is coming through in fourth place. She'd fallen back earlier on in the race, but has put in a great comeback and sprints across the finish line. Tessa Anone takes fourth. Here comes Sana Azagami now. We haven't seen her in action in the cross country uh, last time. Ski jumping, possibly her strength. But she's going to come in in uh, fifth place. And bringing up the rear, Yane Miyazaki. 
from Nagano comes in and has everything to do now in the ski jumping. The Japanese pair of yet again, so Yuna Kasai. And Tess having Go over a really and, uh, good second lap. <laughs> Ends up 53 seconds. It's a noble effort for the young American. So an exciting race. And one, two, and Joanna Kill of uh, Poland. A 17 and a half, but it's a long way back. Look, 53 seconds of the USA and uh, we'll do the calculations for their ski jumping handicap um, but uh, obviously the Japanese will be going into the ski jumping tonight feeling very confident indeed after an excellent race here at the Mount Van Hovenberg circuit Hello from me, Alec Wilkinson from the Mount Van Hovenberg cross country track, a stunning venue that looks even more amazing in the sunshine that we have had today. And the sunshine now beginning to drop behind the mountain peaks of the Adirondacks. It's a top class facility, goes back to the Olympic Games of 1980, but the great thing is that it's in regular use by the country's top athletes. In fact, there are training camps here for athletes from all over the world. We've got 19 men ready for the Mass Start Normal Hill 10 kilometer cross country race in the Nordic combined. And the result here will decide the starting order and points for the ski jumping round later on today. Just a few minutes away from the start, uh, some of the athletes still doing their warm-ups. And they've got to do that because it's minus nine right now here at Lake Placid. Snow temperature minus one, so not uh, particularly cold. Humidity 75%, but it's a uh, beautiful evening. Clear skies, which means it's only going to get colder over the next uh, 40 minutes or so of this race. Part of their preparation will have been to uh, check out the uh, snow surface uh, to sort of see what sort of uh, snow they've got and to try and make the appropriate adjustments to their ski setups. Two Ukrainians competing uh, in the competition here today, Alexander Shumbaretz and uh, Dimitro Mazurchukuk, and uh, we've got another one actually as well, Vitali Rebenyuk. We'll have a full look at that starting list in a moment. And it'll be four laps of a 200, uh, sorry, 2.5 kilometer track. So a total of 10K to be raced, it'll take about 40 minutes or so. And it'll be interesting to see what tactics uh, they decide to employ. Who is going to try, if anyone, to break away early on? Will they stay bunched as a pack and uh, wait and see who it is that makes the first move? So the tactics will be interesting indeed. 19 athletes then in this men's competition representing seven countries and the biggest contingents coming from Japan and the USA with four athletes each. So the aim of uh, the afternoon for these guys really is to try and finish with as much distance between themselves and their nearest competitors. Um, top of that list was uh, Kobayashi who won gold in the Gunderson a uh, couple of days ago. The Japanese hugely strong, definitely the team to beat. And uh, 17th, Ali Askar, the youngest competitor, 17 years old from Kazakhstan. So conversations between teammates. And that is our only gold medalist so far in the men's Nordic combined. We've had the one event, the individual Gunderson. And uh, how is he going to perform today? Sakaturu Kobayashi, a bit difficult to predict, uh, to be honest, because he was so strong in the ski jump that uh, he 
went into the cross-country race uh, on Friday with a two-minute advantage, which was a huge advantage onto all the way around the track so he hasn't really been challenged yet on the tracks here at Lake Placid at the Mount Van Hovenberg circuit so um, be interesting to see how he does of course the mass start means that they do just that they amass at the start and all go off together the man who took silver in the competition on Friday, Nicholas Malasinski from Colorado Mountain College. What an awesome performance he put in um, after starting in seventh position, two and a half minutes uh, behind the starter uh, to take silver. He really worked his way up the field, um, cutting, uh, cutting 30 seconds or more off the athlete that started in second. Other Americans competing, uh, Timothy Ziegler. We've also got Aidan Rip, we're seeing him for the first time, and uh, Henry Johnston as well, and uh, that makes up the four-man team from the USA. Japan, represented by Sakutaro Kobayashi, who we've already seen on camera. He's being joined by Takuyu Nakazawa, Kazuho Kodate, and Motoki Yamanaka. Now, the women's race uh, finished about uh, half an hour ago, so. Uh, the track is being checked and prepared to make sure that it is all fine. It's been um, worked long and hard this uh, today uh, because this morning we saw a cross-country sprint competition going on. So uh, this facility really being used to the max with press facilities, uh, the broadcast centre and lots of uh, food and drink facilities and shopping as well for the fans that have come to watch the action. So as they try and keep warm for the three or four minutes uh, to the start, uh, confirmation there of um, the starting list. This is basically how they finished the previous competition. So it was gold for the Japanese, silver for the USA. And Rasmus Atava of Finland, he put in a fantastic performance as well to take the bronze medal, having started in fourth place. And it's also our last chance to see him in action because he won't be uh, competing in any of the team events, being the only Finnish uh, Nordic combined athlete here at Lake Placid. Henry Johnson and Aidan Rip, uh, both of them uh, local to um, this area. So, well, sorry, Aidan Rip is uh, uh, from uh, not far from down the road. He's uh, well experienced on these tracks and indeed on the uh, hill jumps later on. Timothy Ziegler of uh, the USA there and uh, ahead of Motoki Yamanaka. Ziegler is uh, actually a teammate of Aiden Rips uh, at, uh, at their college. Paul Smith's College, Lake Placid. Okay, so this is the uh, moment when they get themselves into position, they're laying down their skis, they'll be clipping in the bindings. We uh, start this race with uh, tramline tracks, just to uh, keep everybody apart, keep it fair. And you've got to fancy Malasinski's chances in this race. He's proved himself already here over the last couple of days with uh, some really strong performances. And I think it was um, really his staying power that impressed most on Friday. He stuck with a, a chasing group of about six athletes 
uh, before breaking away in the closing stages of the race. Others to keep an eye out for, Evan Nichols of the USA. He was also strong here in the cross country. Dimitro Mazachuk of Ukraine, his um, teammate Vitaly Rebenyuk, and uh, also uh, keep an eye out for Matej Fadrons of the Czech Republic. He impressed and was amongst the leaders for most of that. So the men's 10 kilometer mass start gets underway in the Nordic combined here at Lake Placid. And you can see just how close they are. The tram lines have now uh, given way to open track. They just want to make sure that they don't catch a ski or trip over anybody else's as they make their way up the uh, very early descent here. Straight down at speed. Got to be careful not to make an early mistake, not to uh, let your ski slip away and then find yourself in trouble and uh, on the floor at the back of the group. So it's an early lead for Aiden Rip of the USA. Known to be a really fast skier. Mazachuk of Ukraine also in the mix. And so it looks to me like um, Aidan Ritt is sort of aiming to try and break away and build as much distance from himself and the rest as possible. Remember, every minute you finish ahead of your opponent is worth 15 points before you've even started on that ski jump. So Aidan Ritt out in front and already beginning to build a lead. We've, oh, we've got a faller. He recovers, but that's lost him at least five or six places, and it's going to be a struggle for that athlete uh, to get back. I think it was Takuya Nakazawa of Japan. So a clear strategy then from Aiden Ritt, and that is to get as far ahead as possible. The 21-year-old captain of Lake Placid's Paul Smith's College Nordic team looking to break into the USA Olympic team and qualify for the Olympic Games. But that's all a long way in the future. His focus now is to try and gain as much time as possible and then hold on to it, and that's the difficult part. Yamanaka of Japan or with the 19 bib. Didn't have the best of uh, events in the individual Gunderson. Right, well, we've got two checkpoints um, on each lap. Uh, one is at 1.4k, and then uh, the next one is at 2.1, which is just before they come back into the stadium. And so we've reached that first checkpoint, and Ritt is ahead. But what's his advantage? 7.2 from his teammate Malasinski. And when we come to the second checkpoint, it'll be it'll give us a good idea of uh, how steady he's managing to go. Four laps, remember, of this two and a half kilometer track. Total of 10K. Carefully yeah, does it around the hairpin bend. Getting the times now on the uh, competitors at the rear and at that first checkpoint there's uh, about 30 seconds, 35 seconds between first and 
last and last is Shumbaret of Ukraine at the moment. So Nichols closing in on Rick now. His advantage has been cut to the point where I'd say he's hardly got an advantage anymore. Nakazawa of Japan back in the hunt, making his way up to the top of the slope. So a bit of a game going on now with the Americans. Malasinski and Nichols have moved into the front as they come into the stadium to complete the first of four laps. Rick out in front where he has been from the start as he approaches the end of the first lap. It's a USA 1 2 3. Malasinski and Nichols right behind him. And that's exactly where they want to be. They know the Japanese have some really strong ski jumpers. So they want to try and build their advantage ahead of this evening's ski jumping. And it looks like it's up to Nakazawa to try and close that gap and uh, Kodate is with him as well and the two will work together to try and close the separation on the Americans. Matej Fadrons of the Czech Republic uh, struggling in this uh, race. He's uh, almost a minute behind now at the back of the field. Bit of a surprise, he did well in the individual Gunderson cross country. Same distance, same track. Six seconds separation now between the Americans and the chasing Japanese. A strategy obviously coming into play here now with the three Americans uh, expect are supporting each other and what we have to wait for now is to see when they break for their own individual purpose. Let's bring you up to date uh, that Rasmus Ataba of Finland didn't uh, actually start this race, he didn't manage to start this race, uh, which is a shame because uh, it's his last race of the competition. Focus now on this uh, leading bunch of three Americans. Then right behind them, breathing down their necks, are the two Japanese athletes and Henry Johnston, the other American. Malasinski and uh, Nichols, the two and the number four, battled through the whole of this uh, cross-country race on Friday in the Gunderson. And Nichols led for much of it, or led that chasing bunch for much of it, I should say, before missing out to uh, medal and uh, to watch Malasinski go ahead uh, to take silver. But our bronze medalist that day, did not uh, was not able to start this race. Rasmus Atala, the third. And 
reached the first checkpoint of the second lap. Now you can see the separations. But how far back is it to the Japanese chasers? It's only 16 seconds or so. Very early days in this race as Malasinski begins to break. He looks over his shoulder. Where have they gone, he wonders. It would have been very interesting to be a fly on the wall of the uh, briefing room, the American briefing room, before they went out to hear what their strategy was going to be, to hear what the coaches had come up with. Here we've got second and third. Evan Nichols of the USA. And they're being led by this man, Malasinski, from Colorado. But half Finnish, so spent half his uh, youth in Finland. And that's where he learned his Nordic combined skills. Here comes Nichols. This is his home. He knows this track extremely well, does Evan Nichols. As the leader comes downhill at speed towards the stadium. Nicholas Malasinski out in front. Approaching the halfway stage now. Representing Colorado Mountain College. And uh, he's shown real poise and confidence at these first uh, Winter University games, for him anyway. So Malasinski passes the halfway stage, and what is the separation to Evan Nichols? It's 16 seconds at the end of the second lap, followed closely by Rick. But look at the Japanese, they have closed the gap on the American leaders, Nakazawa and Kodate of Japan. So Malasinski building up that lead but can he hold on to it it's uh, 16 seconds and looking back to where takazawa was 22 seconds so uh, it's, it's certainly not an insurmountable lead he's got to keep going but he's out on his own and that doesn't make it easy does it psychologically he's constantly having to look over his shoulder to see where his opponents are It's a long way from the stadium to the first checkpoint. And then two short sections from the first checkpoint to the second and then two back into the stadium. And that shot gives us a really good idea of the gap between them. Malasinski going so well. Back with the leader. Malasinski. He was uh, telling us that his fondest memory of his sport was uh, his Youth Olympic Games a couple of years ago. He said it was just the most fantastic experience. 
finished out of the medals, but that wasn't the point. The point was the atmosphere and the challenge and the camaraderie amongst the athletes, and that's really spurred him on uh, to set his sights on the Olympic Games. Evan Nichols now coming up to the camera in second place. Representing Community College of Vermont, of Vermont. Twice junior national champion. Number nine, Takuya Nakazawa. Spearheading the Japanese fight back. He's still got time to do it. Two laps completed. Plenty of time still for the Japanese to come back. You can see just how steep and awkward this climb is, especially at this point in the, in the race. Total climb of 87 metres each lap. So we've reached that second uh, checkpoint of the lap. And look at that separation, almost 30 seconds between first and second. So Malasinski going really well, really strongly. And he knows he has to, because he put in a good jump in the individual Gunderson, but it was uh, some distance off the leading bunch. So the leading three, then comes uh, Johnston, another American. Ritt is also in, in the mix. So uh, the top five has four Americans and a Japanese, Nakazawa, sitting third. Malasinski reaches the 7.1 kilometer stage. Time difference at the previous checkpoint was 29.2 seconds. What's it going to be this time? Has he grown his lead? He has. It's over 30 seconds now on Evan Nichols. It's about 400 metres from that checkpoint to the uh, end of the lap inside the stadium. And you can hear the, the cowbells and the... Uh, Crowd roaring on their homeboy. Looking really strong coming into the stadium for the final lap. I'm sure he doesn't feel like it, but uh, 18 and a half minutes in, he looks as if he's just started this race. He's looking strong. Malasinski begins his final lap. The rest just trying to stay in touch as much as possible. Nakazawa right on the back of uh, Nichols skis. And there's the time difference between the leader and second place. So the battle really is between Nichols and uh, Nakazawa. Nakazawa, uh, not the strongest of jumpers in the individual Gunderson. But Nichols jumped uh, a full 17 metres further. So Nichols will be happy with that. Number 12, also of the USA, Henry Johnston. So 
this is the man they're all trying to catch. And he is trying to build up as much of an advantage as possible from them. If he can get that distance, every minute he can put between them is worth 15 points. 15 points on the ski jumping tonight. And that should be a spectacular sight as well. Under the floodlights at the Olympic Ski Jumping Centre here in Salt Lake City. Now, I do apologise, here in Lake Placid. Getting my Olympics confused there. So, it's USA first and second. And Nakazawa still holding third place. Rick of the USA, who led in the early stages. Now struggling to keep up, still in fourth. Beginning to look pretty tired. Listening to the fantastic sound of the skis swishing their way over this excellent, perfect snowy surface. We've had several days of solid snow and the uh, volunteers and track experts have done a, a great job of making sure this is prepared and of the highest standards as Takuya Nakazawa, the leading Japanese athlete, approaches us here ahead of the two Americans. Further back is Johnston. So the top six places being held by American and Japanese athletes. Rebenyuk of Ukraine is his sixth. Kodaty of Japan is in tenth. But this is the man of the moment. Nicholas Malasinski of the USA. And we're about to see if he's uh, grown his lead even more as he's come through this checkpoint. Here's the chasing bunch. So Evan Nichols there just falling back now with the number four bib. His older sister first got into Nordic combined and um, convinced him to have a go, and he hasn't looked back since. Aidan Rip still looking strong. He's won uh, many national college titles in his sophomore year. He's really impressed. What can he do here? Now, this man has nothing to worry about. This race is his. It's just about how much time he can gain now, how much advantage and how many points he can build at going into the ski jumping. So final checkpoint on his final lap, and Malasinski is well ahead. Into the tuck. Carefully does it round the bend at speed, downhill, dropping down into the stadium. He's got a few hundred metres to go now to the finish line. And the separation, 39 seconds between him and his compatriot Rip and Nichols. And then comes Nakazawa. So the battle behind him continues for second and third, but right now, 
Nicholas Malasinski of the USA crosses the finish line and takes the victory in the 10 kilometers mass start. And that puts him in a fantastic position for the ski jumping later today. Here comes second place again from the USA. Aiden Ritt from Paul Smith's College round the corner and then he accelerates and sprints towards the finish line gets himself into that middle lane and pushes and pushes why because he's trying to gain seconds every second on those behind him in third place here comes the other American Evan Nichols and then the best placed Japanese Takuya Nakazawa so it's a one two three in this race for the USA fourth to Japan and let's see if it's going to be fifth to the USA no it's not because Johnston's been overtaken by Kodate sorry by Kobayashi where did he come from Sakaturo Kobayashi the gold medalist in the individual Gunderson crosses the line and has closed a huge gap between himself and the leaders and that could be crucial when it comes to the ski jump the pole Andrei Shishchovic ahead of Kazuho Kodate uh, to so that's a big jump. Uh, has dropped down the field. Down Disappointing uh, closing stage for him. Right behind him is the best placed Ukrainian, Dmitro Mazachuk. Then comes another pole, Pavel Schindler. Confirmation of that result then, the leading four. Malasinski and so Schindler 43 seconds behind this is Yamanaka of Japan it's our first look at, uh, at his performance in cross-country at this event Yamanaka coming in in 19th place, still out on the course, Ziegler of America, the two Kazakhstanis, a Ukrainian, a Pole, and Fadrons of the Czech Republic, who has uh, actually stopped, so whether it, that was injury for Fadrons of the Czech Republic, or whether he got a breakage, I don't know, but he certainly didn't perform at any stage during that race uh, as you would have expected him to. Timothy Ziegler of the USA coming in, 18th place I believe, we'll have that confirmed in a moment. This is Ali Askar of Kazakhstan, followed closely by Magzan Amanakul Duli, his teammate. The youngest competitor about to cross the line. It's all experience, it's all learning for him. Alexander Shumberets of Ukraine, 21 years old, regular top 50 athlete in the Continental uh, Cup circuit. Finished 14th in the individual Gunnison and now comes in in 16th place here. Adam Skupian of uh, Poland. Really promising uh, skier, made his senior debut three years ago at the age of 17. Well, notably, uh, Kobayashi was the winner of the jumping. So, the, uh, the skiers crossing the line towards the back of the field there have their work certainly cut out and uh, close the gap and 
and, and make up time and distance in the ski jumping later today. So confirmation that it was USA first, second and third. And what a time difference back to fifth place over a minute and 13 seconds. But uh, Kobayashi, he jumped well in the individual Gunderson. We know he's a strong jumper. Can he make up? that uh, gap though of a minute 13 that's more than 15 points advantage to Malasinski going into the ski jumping Kazatskan 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 <laughs> in 14th and 15th uh, Ali Askar and Aman Kalduli uh, coming in there Shumbaretz confirmed as 16th for Ukraine and disappointment for Matej Fadrons, who started but was unable to finish the race. Adam Skupian then bringing up the rear in 17th. So that sets things up nicely for the men's. Um, a real battle ahead in the ski jumping later today under the floodlights of the Olympic Ski Jumping Centre. Can Kobayashi cut the, uh, the gap on the American Malasinski in the ski jump? We will find out in a few hours' time. comes to its climax right now with the ski jumping round. from me Alec Wilkinson welcome to the Lake Placid Olympic ski jumping complex an iconic location since the 1980 Olympic Games In recent years it's been refurbished upgraded to bring it up to its current world-class standard Standing by, 23 athletes ready to jump, 17 men and six women in the two different uh, competitions. And the conditions are as close to perfect as you can get. Minus eight, pretty chilly, but the breeze is very, very light. In fact, there's hardly any at all, and the snow is looking fantastic. Well, the fans in Lake Placid have turned out in their numbers to cheer on and possibly see a USA victory in the men's competition. This is what faces the, the uh, jumpers. We're on the 90 meter hill. So the 90 meter landing mark is what we're focused on for every meter more or less than that K point, as it's known, an athlete has two points added or subtracted. Okay. 
So first will be the women for this Nordic combined Normal Hill Mass Start, the climax. And really, the Japanese are once again in control, having won all three medals in the Gunderson a couple of days ago. They are back. And this is the order in which they jump. So Yuna Kasai, who won the cross-country race, goes last. And Ayana Miyazaki, uh, who was last in the cross-country race, will go first with a handicap of minus 22.3 points. And this is how the men will go. Adam Skupian of Poland will go first. And look at that gap, minus 68.7 based on the results of the cross-country race. <coughs> We've got Evan Nichols and Aiden Rip of the USA going 15th and 16th. Kobayashi of Japan, keep an eye out on him. He's the gold medalist from the uh, Gunderson event uh, earlier in the week. But that is the man to chase, Malasinski, Nicholas Malasinski of the USA, who absolutely dominated that, uh, that cross-country race earlier on this afternoon here in Lake Placid. So two nations looking for gold in this competition, the USA in the men's and Japan in the women's. Those are the favourites, and these are our judges. And I was talking to... Um, uh, Mr. Lostenberger, the last man on that list, uh, just a few minutes ago, and he is very pleased with how everything is set up here. And uh, actually, the judges uh, that we're looking at now will be scoring, and their names are on the screen for you. And those judges are looking for all sorts of things uh, in style, and in movement, and we'll look through those and discuss those as the competition unfolds. They've already had a training run, um, so they are warmed up and ready to go. The four jumpers have already um, uh, been down the slope to test that all is well and fair, and uh, everything seems to be uh, ready and clear. So wearing the number one bib is Ayani Miyazaki, our first competitor in the ski jumping round of this women's Normal Hill Mass Start 5 kilometers. Bronze medalist in the Gunderson event a couple of days ago. Miyazaki is just waiting for her coach to lower his flag once he's happy with the breeze. Seems to be picking up a little bit at the top of the hill, but not so strong further down and in the landing area. And they've decided it's a bit too strong, so they've instructed Ayana Miyazaki to make her way uh, back off the bar. Looks like we're using gate 31. Miyazaki managed 81.5 in her training jump, 81.5 meters distance, which was uh, the fourth best in training. So with just four points uh, between first and third, that is really where the battle will go on. The last three jumpers uh, will probably decide the medals, barring disaster, of course. Big smile from uh, Miyazaki. She really, uh, she struggled quite a bit actually in the cross country today. She wasn't in the same form that she showed during the Gunderson event on Friday. And I'm just looking at the wind ribbons uh, where I'm located, which is um, halfway down the landing slope. And they are beginning to, um, it is beginning to blow down here as well, the wind. 
Well, a mighty cold night in Lake Placid, minus eight, but it has been uh, a a, a, an absolutely stunningly beautiful day. Gorgeous sunshine all day. The first that uh, we've seen here uh, for about 10 days. And I'm pleased to say that's encouraged the fans to come out. And I suspect they've also heard a little rumor that uh, there could be a gold medal for the USA later on this evening in the men's event. But that shot gives you a real idea of just how daunting these hills are. So the breeze seems to be settling. Flag is down. Miyazaki gets the OK to get this underway. The 20 year old from Nagano launches off the table. Her skis steady. Hips possibly could have been more bent wait for that result to come through and it was 85.5 distance so that's 107.7 that is a good score for Miyazaki Second to go, Sana Azagami, also of Japan. A good launch. The right ski back, it looked long. She managed 86. 86 metres in the training run. Waiting for the judges' scores for Ayani. 108.9. And some good, some good scores there, some 17s from the judges. They like that. Tess Arnone, the youngest competitor not just in the women's, but in the order combined in total. 17 years old from the USA. Still learning her trade and puts in a safe jump. 58.5 meters distance. See her legs straight, ankles bent upwards. That's what they're looking for. Points are a little bit low, though. We'll see her total. Mostly 14s from the judges. So 35.8 points. Next jumper, Joanna Kill from Poland. High hopes of a medal. She's looking good. Bit short. She's jumped further. But mostly 16, 16 and a half from the judges. And she jumped 81 meters. Total of 92.3. And there is our current leader, Sana Azagami. But this is Haruka Kazai, the gold medalist in the Gunderson event, currently sitting in second. Looking very good. 
Williams and a nice long jump as well. 89.5 distance. The judges like the style as well. And that has put a top of the pile with 113.6 points. So it is now up to Yunakasai, the twin sister of Haruka. Can she snatch the gold back or is she going to have to settle for silver or bronze? Good, powerful launch off the hill, and it's a long jump. And confirmation of the distance, 91.5 metres, and the judges are loving her style. I can see the points coming in. There's an 18, a 17 and a half. I think that might be enough to win the gold. 122.2 points, and that does seal victory. So gold medal goes to Yuna Kasai in the women's normal hill mass start five kilometer cross country event. A repeat of the Gunderson event in which the Kasai sisters took gold and silver, except it's in reverse. Yuna taking the gold this time. Confirmation. Yuna Kasai, the 18-year-old from Sapporo, takes the gold medal. Her sister takes silver, and a great finish from Joanna Kill of Poland gets her the bronze. Joanna, who took th a three-year break from the sport because it was just too much of a financial burden for her. She's come back in recent months, and she has come back in style. Congratulations to Joanna Kill with the bronze medal. Yeah, there's our champion, Yuna Kasai. She watched as her sister won gold two days ago, and now it's her turn to have the gold medal. So that was just a, a four jumper checking the hill. You're not missing a thing. And we're going to switch to the men's final now. A bigger field, 17 in total. Six countries represented. Uh, we're actually missing two competitors today uh, through illness. Matej Fadrons of the Czech Republic and Rasmus Atava. So time for the men's individual mass starts, the 10 kilometer normal hill final round, the ski jumping that will decide the medals. So no Matej Fadrons of the Czech Republic, no uh, Rasmus Atava of Finland, our bronze medalist in the Gunderson event. 17 men, however, all ready to go. This is just uh, another four jumper testing the hill. And America dominating this competition so far. So if you weren't with us, Sakutaro Kobayashi of Japan absolutely dominated the individual Gunderson event on Friday. Um, sweeping the American competitors uh, away with a fantastic, uh, a fantastic jump that gave him an unassailable lead, really, um, in the cross country. It would have needed a, a breakage or some sort of injury for him to have lost that. But we had a terrific race going on amongst the uh, Americans and uh, a couple of other nationalities behind him for second and third. This time round, it's the Americans dominating. Our first jumper is Adam Skupian of Poland. 
He starts already with minus 68.7 points. So this is a ski jump for pride. A little bit short. And is to accelerate as you travel further. Yeah, 84.7 points. So um, he managed a distance of 73 and a half. The first of three Ukrainians uh, now, Alexander Shumbaretz. Twenty-one years old, regular top fifty athlete in the Continental Cup circuit. Realizing that every jump is gaining him experience. With many of these competitors, it's very much a learning curve. It's not so much the result as going away from Lake Placid with lots of lessons learned and improvements made. Waiting for the breeze again. It's uh, wind ribbons just beginning to flutter a little bit too strongly now. On gate 22. Of support from the neutral fans here, enjoying the fact that these athletes have been able to travel to the US to compete. You certainly need the coat, it is very cold up there, especially if the breeze is getting up. If you're wondering how they get up there um, and why that you're seeing them come down the steps, well, there's an elevator that takes them to the very top of uh, each of the two ski jumping hills here. And then they obviously walk down to the appropriate gate. Right, I think the officials are happy now with the conditions. So here goes Alexander Shumbaretz of Ukraine. Green light, and he has 10 seconds to set off. Clean landing, a little bit short. 74.5 the distance. And the points come in from the judges, give him 86.1. Up next is uh, Magzan Aman Kilduli of Kazakhstan. Two Kazakhstanis competing here. together on the landing it's a short jump though another look at it again 
the judge is really looking the movement through the air or lack of it good control body shape and uh, points total points of 87.6 with a distance of 81 and a half meters for Alan Kilduli of Kazakhstan it actually puts him top of the pile at the moment once you take away the uh, points from the cross country youngest competitor in the men's competition Ali Askar Kazakhstan managed 73 meters in training that might be close but nice control, a nice landing as he came down. The telemark landing is what they're attempting with one foot uh, ahead of the other foot and arms out straight for balance. And the judges score that as well. It was 77 and a half meters total of 80.3 points. All right, Bill, we're going to go on to the first American in this competition. So at the moment, after four jumpers, the two Kazakhstanis are first and second. Number five is Timothy Ziegler of the USA. Studies at Paul Smith's College, part of their Nordic team. Big push the table clean landing he's happy with it punches the air the Americans very strong in the cross-country races and uh, really went out from the start of this afternoon's race to try and dominate and they succeeded it's a tactic that worked 52 and a half points and a distance of 62 and a half meters for Timothy Ziegler. So it's still Aman Kilduli of Kazakhstan in first place as we wait for the first of the Japanese athletes to hit the hill. Motoki Yamanaka waits for the flag to be dropped so that he can get his jump underway. Remember, no mistakes allowed because you only get one jump in this competition. Gliding through the air, and that looked like a good long jump. 79 meters using his hands to steer almost through the air like rudders. And 97.4 points will put him in the lead overall. 58.4 points once you take into account the cross-country scores. But of course it's the second half of this, uh, this field that will be in with a chance at the medals. Pavel Schindler of Poland goes next. Twenty-two years old. psychology of the sport is fascinating how you can push yourself to overcome the fear as you sit at the top of that hill and the longer you sit there the more difficult that must be well the breeze must be a lot stronger up at the top than it is further down the slope because um, the wind ribbons here 
and, and looking fairly flat. That's Motoki Yamanaka, our current leader, taking his place <laughs> in the throne room. <laughs> Three Polish athletes uh, competing in this Nordic combined. Of course, Poland, uh, a hugely strong ski jumping nation. And the ski jumping will get underway in earnest tomorrow, right here. And a number of Polish athletes here with a definite intent of winning medals. This is how we stand so far. Yamanaka, a considerable lead over the two Kazakhstanis, and then comes Shumbaretz of Ukraine in fourth. And below him is uh, Adam Skrupian and Timothy Ziegler of the USA. Now you can see just uh, at the bottom of the screen there were the uh, wind ribbons that have picked up now so it, it's kind of it's it's sort of it's not oscillating it's in the, in the same direction so the wind is steady we just need it to drop a little now there's a tough job carrying a camera like that on steps like those Stay warm. Now, as he descends, just keep an eye on, on, on what's going on there because the aim is to basically keep your center of gravity around the ankle area, which means it's easier to push off and take off. So you can watch him go down. Nice clean jump. Telemark landing. What a shot that is. They disappear into the distance. It was 80 and a half meters for uh, Pavel Schindler. And that's a good jump. And the scores he's received puts him into second place for Poland. So it's jumper number eight. We're almost halfway through the field. And this is Dmitro Mazuchuk of Ukraine, 23 years old, from Lviv State University. He's already hugely experienced. He competed for his country at uh, Beijing at the Beijing Winter Olympics last year. And now he's just waiting for his coach to lower the flag and give him the go. Good speed, good launch. And a great length as well for Mazurchuk. The Ukrainian champion at both ski jumping and Nordic combined has really pulled off a great jump there. 88 meters, good points from the judges. They like that and he has gone top of the standings with 110.4 points. Time for him to move. <laughs> Make way for Dimitra. Andrei Szczebic of Poland, next to go. Who's ninth in the cross country. Has always 
just waiting for that flag to drop. He starts with minus 27.8 points. Remember, it's not just uh, competition for medals, they're also competing against each other within the team. That's just ahead of that first red line. And it's 85 meters. The judges like his style. They like the way he positioned himself and how steady he was. And they have given him enough points now to put him top of the, uh, of the leaderboard, 111.6 points. So an excellent jump from the pole. Second Japanese contestant in the competition, sorry, uh, third to go is Kazuho Kodate. He starts more or less on the same points that uh, Shestjevic had when he began his run, but you can see how much stronger the wind is getting. Still a backwind, so not changing direction. May decide to yeah to tell him to move off the bar looks a bit disappointed at that and you, you can understand that can't you because <laughs> you have this whole routine this whole ritual for getting yourself to the start bar um, and then it's interrupted and you have to go through it all over again and those are our top four you can see how close first and second are Men with the points from the cross country are still to come. The favourites, including Sakutaro Kobayashi, who won gold on Friday in the Gunderson. High hopes from the Japanese that he could come away and snatch a gold medal. But he's 18.4 points behind the leading American, Nicholas Malasinski. So our leader from Poland, Andrzej Szczebic. I think we're ready to go. A big cheer from the crowd below for Kodate of Japan. flat to create lift 83 meters for Kodate a couple of high points from the judges but will they be enough 99.9 points and that puts him into the bronze medal position so a smile for the camera, but uh, you get the sense that he's pretty disappointed with that. Seven more jumpers to come. The last of the Ukrainians going now, Vitaly Rebenyuk. jumped 83 and a half meters in an earlier training jump it's about 20 minutes before we went live with this competition that was a good distance for him and there he is our leader from Poland sitting in the chair and I like the composure that we just saw from Revenik
earlier on the women's competition was won by the Japanese uh, Yuna Kasai. Silver went to Haruka Kasai, her sister, and bronze went to Poland. Will the Polish men also be able to come away with a medal? That is the big question. But things being held up at the moment by the wind that isn't playing ball. Rebenuk of Ukraine is ready to go. Focused, concentrating, he's waiting for the light to go green. It's gone, off he goes. Nice launch, good control of the skis. A little bit short possibly though. The distance given as 82 meters. Now, what do the judge judges make of that jump? Oh, they liked it. 103.2 points in total, and that puts him into second place. Yeah, <laughs> says Andre of Poland. It's very close. It was 83.8 for Andre and 83.2 for Vitali. So it's currently Poland, Ukraine, Ukraine. As Henry Johnston of the USA prepares to launch. Junior national champion, two times junior world championship team member for the USA. I'm sure his dad and grandfather will also be watching, if not here, but on TV. They were both Nordic combined skiers. The sport very much runs in the family. But they're going to have to pause and wait to watch their son and grandson launch himself on this, on this hill, because once again, the breeze Getting a little bit too strong. So Kazuho Kodate has um, moved to fourth now with Mazachuk into third, Rebenuk into second. And the pole remains first. Yeah, I'm looking up the uh, hill and he's making his way back out onto the bar. So very soon, Johnston will set off. He uh, managed 72 metres in training. He's going to need to go a lot further than that to have any hope as he's got a 19-point deficit. Like a nice launch. It's a short jump though, 75 metres, so he did beat, uh, or he did better, I should say, his uh, training run. Just waiting for the judges' points to come through. Total, total of 81.8 points, and that puts Henry Johnston of the USA in fifth place the best placed of the Americans so far, but there are still three to come. In fact, we now have two Japanese jumpers and three American jumpers. And this next guy was the gold medalist in the Gunderson event on Friday. He had a whopping jump of over, well over 100 meters. And that helped him dominate the competition. He finished the cross country in fifth place with a very late comeback. How's he going to do here? Oh, what a jump. What a jump from the Japanese Sakutaro Kobayashi. 
He pumps the air. He knows he's done everything he can. 100.5 meters. The scores from the judges are okay. A couple of 18, an 18, 16 and a half. They'll just work out what that average score is. It makes 143 points, and that puts Kobayashi into the gold medal position. Well, that really lays down the gauntlet for the Americans still to come, and indeed his teammate Takuya Nakazawa, the last of the non-American jumpers to go. style but it's short and that also gives you a perspective on just how good Kobayashi's jump was 82 meters for Nakazawa and you'd normally be very happy with that so it's 102.1 for Nakazawa and that puts him into second place. So it is currently Japan on gold, Japan on silver, Poland on bronze. But now we have the uh, three big hitters from the cross country race. A uh, couple of local boys, Evan Nichols, Aiden Ripp, and then our leader, Nicholas Malasinski, all from the USA, Ed, Nick, Evan Nichols to go first. In the Community College of Vermont two times junior national champion made it into the US national team a couple of years ago so they have to draw on all that experience to hold his nerve and put in a massive jump he does have go into this though with a seven point advantage over the uh, current leader over Kobayashi thanks to his cross-country run strategically the Americans raced the cross-country well almost perfectly they went out fast and hard from the start regrouped near the uh, front at the front of the field and then held that position all the way to the end there was changes of leads amongst themselves but uh, the Americans really dominated the uh, the whole of the race well the man on the mic in the stadium is getting the local fans going he's getting big shouts of encouragement from them and I can tell you that the American competitors on the hill will be able to hear that. It's like a bowl here, and the noise travels upwards. And it is an incredible atmosphere now. That's the man they have to beat, Sakutaro Kobayashi. Hoping to grab his second gold medal of these games. of the points there and the positions for the top four and you realize just how strong Kobayashi has been in the ski jumping when you think that he went into it having finished fifth in the Still waiting for the breeze to settle. A smile from uh, Evan Nichols. He raced a, a good race in the individual Gunderson, leading for great part of that uh, cross-country race, but just fell away towards the end and uh, just missed out on a medal, finishing in fourth. The worst place to be. Right, 
he gets the okay to move back onto the bar. The light's gone yellow. 97 and a half meters is what he needs to beat Kobayashi. No, he doesn't think it's gonna happen. He's shaking his head, the coach. It is Johnston. Sorry, Nichols is away. Evan Nichols launches himself off the table. It's a long jump, but is it long enough? He doesn't think so. He's a bit disappointed, to say the least. 86 metres was the distance. He's getting good points from the judges, though. And as we watch him land on the replay, Evan Nichols goes into the silver medal position. 116.7 points. Next American is Aidan Ripp. 21 years old, captain of the of Lake Placid's Paul Smith's College Nordic team. Had a great sophomore year, winning quite a, a number of national college titles. But can he pull it off here? Aiden Ritt loves the lasagna after jumping to settle the stomach. Will he be celebrating with one in about five minutes' time? Giving him the count. Aiden Ritt is not going to go yet. <laughs> How nerve wracking is that for the contestants? The man in the lead, Kobayashi. Extraordinary jump from him, 100.5. All right, the crowd are getting excited again because they're Aiden Rip, the local boy, is back on the bar and ready to go. And the clock is counting. Off he goes. Aiden Rip, will it be a medal? jump better known for his cross-country sprinting and racing but he's happy with that 68 meters and it won't be enough for a medal really yeah 60.5 points and that puts him into 11th place so there is only one jumper to go, and that is Nicholas Malasinski, and only he can now stop the man on the screen. Sakutara Kobayashi, sitting proud at the top of the leaderboard. Now, Malasinski, probably more confident on the cross-country track than on the ski jump, but in the Gunderson, he put in a good jump. Can he do it again? This is Malasinski for gold. It looked like a good jump, not as long as the as Kobayashi's, but good enough. 89.5. Now we have to wait for the judges' scores. It was good style, nice and solid. And it hasn't been enough because he's been given some good points from the judges, but it's 119.2, so Nicholas Malasinski will have to settle for the silver. Still a terrific result. Uh, he shakes his head a little bit. He looks a little bit disappointed. He felt he had gold. But this man here from Japan wins his second gold medal of these games. And now he adds the mass start to the Gunderson. Confirmation of the results. 
Sakutaro Kobayashi takes the gold with a terrific jump. Nicholas Malasinski comes second for silver. Evan Nichols in third for the USA for bronze. So the USA still to win a gold medal at these games. Henry Johnston was ninth. Toki Yamanaka in 10th, the two Kazakhstanis 13th and 14th, Ali Askar 17 years old, he'll be pleased with that result. And finally Timothy Ziegler uh, finishing in 17th place, he put in a jump of 62 and a half metres in. So just like on Friday in the Gunderson, it is three, th uh, it's, it's medals galore for Japan, gold in the men's. Ladies and gentlemen, the mascot ceremony for the North Time now Line for the mascot ceremony mass for start. the women's individual mass start. Again, dominated by Japan who take the gold and the silver ahead of Poland. Japan's won the most gold medals than any other country in Nordic combined at the FISU Winter Games. When you see how they've dominated here, you can understand why. In the center there, the winner. Her, her, Please sorry, welcome Yuna the winners. Sasai. The mascots will be presented by Mark Casadolo. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Poland in third place, Joanna Kiel. Joanna Kiel of Poland with a terrific performance today, both in the cross country and in the ski jump. And her career that she's renewed in recent months after a break, her career is already going. Second place representing Japan, Haruku Kasai. Haruku Kasai of Japan, who won the gold in the Gunderson event, takes the silver this time around. First place and champion, representing Japan, Yuna Kasai. Yet another gold medal for Japan in the Nordic combined. So Japan, Always excelling in Nordic combined. In fact, going into the Fizu games, they've won World 14 University of games the 43 winners. gold medals handed out since the first games in 1960, more than any other country. And there is the result from this year's women's mass start. Gentlemen, stand by for the men. Thrilling. Evan Nichols putting in a great jump for third place. The winner of the cross country race, Nicholas Malasinski, second American on the podium, just couldn't quite hold on to the lead. 
and had to settle for silver because this man, Kobayashi of Japan, was superlative off the jump. That's how it finished with the breakdown of points. Uh, Kobayashi starting with minus 18.4. He really had to put in that jump, didn't he? Malasinski and Nichols in second and third. Also of note, Ali Askar, the youngster, 17 years old from Kazakhstan, coming in in 14th. Ladies and gentlemen, mascot ceremony for the Nordic Combined Individual Mass Start. Time for the men's mascot ceremony. Medals will be presented later. If you're wondering why there's this Please gap, it's because there the is winners. the opportunity for um, for athletes to put in a protest, the and so they build in prote possible protest time Mark for the judges Mascaldo. to deliberate those protests in between the mascot and the medal presentation. Third place, so that's why it's done. Not that there has been a protest, United but States that's just the format America, of, uh, of the event. Bronze medalist Evan Nichols of the USA. Second place, first United bronze States of these of games. Nicholas Malasinski. And Nicholas Malasinski, who put himself in a great position to take the gold after the cross country, couldn't quite do it on the jump, and takes the USA's fourth silver. First place games. and champion representing Japan. Two out of two for Kobayashi. A gold on Friday in the Gunderson and a gold now in the mass start. The Lake Placid 2023 Izu World University Games winners. There are our medalists in the men's individual mass start. It's gold for Japan, it's gold for Kobayashi yet again. Here we go, we gotta go. Ladies and gentlemen, stand so a terrific by uh, event, for and the men really putting in uh, a thrilling finish. But ultimately, can anyone beat Sakutaro Kobayashi? Well, the team events begin in a couple of days' time, and that will, I'm sure, mix things up. But the Japanese, with all their medals so far, will be very confident of more when the team events begin.